Now that we talked about you know, implementing strength, getting the right technique, uh, specializing into bench press more, so you know, really focusing on the bench press, we've really tried to gather some very important factors. I wanna carry on and give you even more uh, important information. And here, because we talked about strengths, I would like to give you something that helped me as an intermediate or a late beginner. It's a strength cycle, which I got from a great French natural bodybuilding website. So what's a strength program or you know, a strength cycle? Well, this is something that gives you proper landmarks and I usually optimized well to, for you to improve on a certain movement or a certain routine as a whole. A strength cycle or a strength program uh, that is well made will usually be optimized in a way that you recover well with it and that there is a reason behind all sets that you do and all repetitions that you do you're basically fooling your progression you're basically not forcing it you like don't realize that you're improving what i mean by fooling is that your body uh doesn't really realize that you're improving basically you know usually something that doesn't work is when you really force things too much you're not smooth with the way you train and you really go hard without any optimization. This optimization is offered here in a strength cycle that is well optimized and you basically improve pretty smoothly. You're really you know, not training to failure basically all the time. Here you're doing it where in a way that you're basically working you know, uh, up to most of the time 90% of uh, what you can do. You, you, you're almost close to failure but you're not and you literally uh, have strategies that make you improve without being burnt out. So this program is basically benching twice a week. That means that you end this strength cycle in three or four weeks because there are seven bench sessions in this program. What you want to do is know your one repetition max and you're going to multiply it by the percentage that is offered for each session in this program. So the first bench session is a five by five uh, times 82.5 percent which comes back which comes back to a 5 by 5 at 65 kg because 82 percent of basically 80 kg is 65 kg on the bench session number two you're gonna do this with 85 percent which makes it a 67.5 kg uh, workload for the bench session number three it's gonna be a 5 by 3 at 90 percent which is a 72.5 kg the bench press number four is going to be at 85 again but as you can see this time you're starting the 5x5 five five with the workload of 75.5 kg which was the second bench session that i presented to you before and then the bench session number five is going to be a 5x4 five at 90 percent which was the third session that you did at 72.5 kg and then the Bench session number six is going to be a five by three at 92.5, which is 75 kg. So as you see, as I explained, you can have like fooling your body by going very intelligently into increasing the workload uh, with the very specific uh, rep, rep ranges that are very close to each other. And so your body doesn't really realize what, but you're really optimizing an intelligent program that will make you progress uh, in a very optimal way. And on the bench session number seven, we're basically asking you to do a max reps at 85%, which is the 67.5 kg that you're doing on the bench session number two. So what we're doing here is basically maxing out at uh, 67.5 kg and see how much we can get from that. And what you should be able to get is something close to a 10 repetition max, max reps. But at the end of the cycle, strength cycle you should be able to basically get 10 rep max 9 rep max usually i would fall there uh, you know 8 to 10 reps and my max would probably improve from 2.5 to 5 kg which is pretty interesting Th three to five minutes in between the sets is recommended what, what i want you to do is basically your set should uh, be close to failure at the end of basically your uh, five sets you should be close to failure basically the first set you can take three minutes rest the second set you know three minutes again the third set you know three minutes and then if it gets harder you can give yourself one more minute to get the fourth set uh, to the amount of rep that you're supposed to do and then the last set you know take five minutes you have to play you know intelligently with the rest that you can take between the sets uh, that is recommended and three to five minutes is this recommended time that i give you so that is in my opinion a pretty 
a smart strength training program that I just gave you for bench press. Be careful because online we find a lot of uh, programs that are not so good for, uh, you know, made by gurus who just want your money. But here I think that this is something uh, that will help you out if you want to do it. And uh, this helped me out a lot. You know, I went from 80 kg to 120 kg using this method. And uh, that was maybe over, you know, a year, year and a half that I, I made, you know, this jump from 80 kg to 120, which is pretty good. What I want you to remember from a strength training program like this one is that basically it will give you an intelligent structure to improve. As you get more advanced, you know, you will have more experience. You might be able to, you know, think about other things that you want to do a certain way. But if you're intermediate or even a late beginner, a stress program like this can help you go a very long way. And even more, if you do these other tips that I'm going to give you now, and one of the most important tips that I can give you while doing a strength program like this one is to eat the right way. So you have to get your nutrition on point. This is super important, I think. Uh, I wouldn't say that nutrition is the most important aspect of uh, bodybuilding as a whole, like a lot of people say. I think that training is more important because this is harder, but nutrition is very important and it will really complete this training that you do. And in my opinion, when you're getting into strength cycles like this for the bench press, it will usually be associated with a slight bulk or a bulk or a heavy bulk. I wouldn't recommend a heavy bulk here, you know, eating really at a, a moderate to a quite good amount of uh, calories to improve. This is something that I used to do, which helped me improve a lot, give me good momentum, really keep me you know, making progress very fast, but as well putting on some fat on the side. So it really depends from people to people, but to keep it uh, pretty normal here, I will uh, advise you so if you're a late beginner that you've, you know, went through your beginner phase of, you know, adding some muscle quite easily. And here, I think that at some point, slight bulking is probably your best, best option to basically lead the way with uh, this, you know, strength bench press cycle. It will help you have more energy each time you do your session. It will really go with this momentum of wanting to improve, having more energy in the tank, uh, adding on some weight. Uh, you know, to help you also build muscle and help you improve on the loads that you lift over time and the loads that you basically improve on this strength cycle. Your nutrition here, mostly when doing strength cycles like this one, is basically like your fuel, uh, you know, when you're using your car. You basically don't want to run out of fuel for something that is uh, quite important uh, in terms of your know, nervous system and in terms of uh, recovering your muscles that you're uh, working during your sessions. Basically, when you're cutting, you're really reducing this fuel and you're kind of playing with fire, you know, you're tired all the time, etc. But when you uh, really want to put on muscle, etc., don't hesitate to put fuel. Uh, what you want to do is not put yourself in this position. You want to be, yes, enough fuel. I'm not stressed out. I'm eating, you know, uh, quite a lot, giving myself energy to go a long way uh, in this bulk and building quite a lot of muscles. So my recommendation is, you know, to be at 200 to 400 calorie surplus and see where it goes. Obviously, I will make other video about nutrition. I can't go too deep in that one if this video doesn't want to last two hours, but basically get your nutrition on point and at a small calorie surplus, this will be what most of the people, most people will be in that position basically to improve on the bench and on a strength cycle like this one. All right, guys, this tip, pretty important as well. Strengthening your triceps, basically improving on your triceps because this is an important movement for the bench press. Uh, triceps are really involved a lot in the movements, in chest movements and particularly the bench press. So of course you might not want, especially your triceps to be, uh, you know, the strongest part uh, basically of the movement when you do bench press. Uh, you know, if your morphology is good for chest, then that's great because uh, a lot of your strength will obviously come from your chest, but the triceps can also help you go a long way and really help you out. If you're someone who sometimes struggle uh, with shoulders and have some pain here, you know, having stronger triceps to help you in the movement can be also beneficial. So in my opinion, working on your triceps besides your chest sessions is something that is pretty crucial if you want to improve faster on your bench press. You can do very simple exercises, stick to the basics, school crushers, uh, things like dips. The French press are very interesting movements for your triceps. In my opinion, good session a week of triceps should be enough. If you're starting to do triceps twice a week with chest twice a week, it might be too much. In my opinion, for me, my body morphology and the way my triceps react, this is too much. My triceps, I don't need them to do that much 
for them to grow. They're, you know, a big muscle part of my body and I get cramps almost if I work them out too much. They literally blow up and I need to do them an hour and a half as an advanced level to, you know, improve normally on them while my biceps I will spend four or five hours a week. So it depends, you know, who you are. If, you know, you can train your triceps twice a week and do bench press twice a week, well, well done. But in my opinion, one good strengthening uh, trying to improve on your triceps, uh, overloading them over time uh, once a week besides your two chest sessions a week is totally enough. And I want you also to program pretty well. I don't want you to do triceps the day before chest because you're going to be super tired on your bench press. It's not going to be uh, comfortable at all. It's not going to feel nice. I want you to do them in a way that it's after the chest that you're doing and that it gives enough time basically before your next chest session. As well, why not do your tricep session after the bench and the chest session? That can be pretty interesting to add just some more bench pressing uh, in your session because you could actually do some close grip bench press, which in my opinion is very interesting and even more when you're advanced and you know training your triceps a bit more on the side. This can get you to bench pressing almost you know three times a week so basically the close grip bench press is obviously not the exact chest bench press as we know it, but still this is a way to perfect your technique uh, to you know hit your bench press in a different angle. And I think that it can help you, like I said earlier, uh, to do basically you know more practicing of the, of the bench press movement. And so close grip bench press can also be very interesting. So if you your recovery allows it, you know, feel free to do some close grip bench press so you're actually practicing even more and specializing even more in the movement of bench pressing through your triceps. Whenever you can find great exercises like this who have benefits for uh, both hands, like, you know, here your chest and your triceps, then why not doing them? Dips are also a very interesting exercise because you actually both work your triceps and your chest at the same time. And so the benefit that you will get, for example, on working on your triceps uh, with dips might also transfer somewhat to your chest movements. So basically, if you're doing your tricep session, let's say that this tricep session could result in 30% involvement of your chest as well, which will actually help you uh, progress on chest faster. And so as well on your bench press and all the movements that are uh, chest related. Now in the last things that I want you to work on, I will talk quickly about stronger legs and core. I think that these two can highly participate to help you get a better bench quicker. I believe having a very strong core can really help you increase your stability, you know, thus preventing injuries. The bench press requires you to stay tight everywhere else while your arms and the chest do the work. Uh, learning how to drive, you know, force from your legs is important and a proper leg stress program can help you out, just like you're doing for bench press. Skipping leg like day will easily sabotage your bench press gains and I know what I'm talking about because legs wasn't something that I was doing much uh, at some point and so I think that if I had much stronger legs, my bench press would not only be four plates, but maybe 200. So, you know, if you don't skip legs as a beginner and you do it all the way uh, to your advanced level, why being very serious on the bench press, you can do wonders. So with the legs, you're driving force from the ground, from your feet up to your legs and to your upper body. This is one of those powerlifter secrets that bodybuilders miss out on usually. This is why powerlifters like Owen Hubbard will bench press uh, 470 pounds when they actually only weight 180 pounds. If you bench with your legs up the air, you will realize how much harder this is. Now, core will usually be seen as a detailed but solid stability can still help you get a solid bench. It will improve your safety and technique. I would suggest you thickening your abs with heavy abs movement, seeking progressive overload, and also implement some static ab exercises for your stability like the plank, etc. Now we're getting closer to the end of this video and I wanna give you something that you might care about if you're someone who really uh, care about, you know, lasting on the long term, this could help you. Obviously beginners don't really care about this, but as you age, this is something that you might care about because it's a marathon, it's not a sprint, you know, natural bodybuilding, and so is your bench progress. You don't wanna uh, mess yourself up too quickly and so your rotator cuff uh, is going to be very important to work on if you're caring about this long-term longevity. I know that's not the most exciting topic, but it's more fun than, you know, taking six months off of benching because you blow out your rotator cuff. So the rotator cuff, you know, is a pretty important muscle group of four muscle. They attach to the shoulder to stabilize the head of your arm bone within the socket. 
So there is the supraspinatus, there is the subscapularis, there is the teres minor, and there is the infraspinatus. You know, the cause of rotator cuff injuries might involve overloading from sudden increase in your intensity or bad form, as I mentioned earlier, the technique is pretty important. And I wanted to warn you about this because bench press is one of the most famous exercises to damage your rotator cuff if not done the right way. That's why retracting your shoulders is also very important because when you keep your shoulders soft and you don't retract, like I said earlier with you know this technique of retracting shoulders involving your upper back, it can irritate some of the rotator cuff tendons in front of the shoulder. So now you don't have to work hard on the rotator cuff exercise. You just need to have a regular you know, routine for them once or twice a week for five or 10 minutes, just take care of them. The most important is the infraspinatus. And I will attach a few exercises that could be interesting in the description below if you want to look at them. Now I want to give you an example of programming. What a program could look like for you know late beginners, intermediate, when they want to bench press twice a week, as I explained, and in a way that 